No, Gondaga's playing Arkansas. A final warning if I could ask everyone to please take your seats. We have everybody here, and I think we're good to go. All right. Good morning, Boker Tov, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, all, all of you up here, the dignitaries, for standing. And um, I understand that we won't stand in the sun for an hour, which is a good thing. Uh, I want to start with a melody, and uh, I want you to sing it with me. Uh, I'm David Margulies. I'm the cantor here, and this is Rabbi Laura Regev. She's one of the rabbis here. And uh, we've done this song a number of times for different uh, moments, but in this one it seems so fitting. And you can uh, sing along uh, with La La La, uh, whatever's going to work here. It goes like this. Olam chesed yibane, la 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 Olam chesed yibane, la 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 I will build this world from love. La 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 la. And you must build this world with love. La 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 la. Olam chesed yibane. La 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 la. They didn't know they were going to be a choir today. Hey, I la 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 la. La 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 la. And if we build this world with love, la 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 la. Then God will surely be with us. La 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 la. I want to thank you so much for coming. It's wonderful to see members of the community from across the Marin Jewish community and others here today, as well as to welcome individuals and organizations from Marin County who walk hand in hand with us in solidarity and standing against anti-Semitism. To our elected officials, thank you for joining us in raising your voices to speak out against anti-Semitism and commit ourselves to accountability, policy, and education initiatives that ensure our community is not only protected, but that we feel seen, understood, and valued. And finally, thank you to JCRC for organizing this event today and launching the Here I Am, Hineni initiative to increase public recognition of how anti-Semitism impacts our community. You have given us all the opportunity to proudly say, Hineni, here I am, I am proud. Uh, as a Jewish community, we stand against all forms of hatred and bigotry. We take seriously our obligation to tikkun olam, to repairing this world, which to us means working in solidarity to end all forms of racism and prejudice. We're deeply concerned at the rise of anti-Semitism we are witnessing across the country and in online spaces for our teens and for all of our people. I spend every Wednesday night in this sanctuary with some of our teenagers, and we talk endlessly about the anti-Semitism they're facing in their lives. We're actually creating a Jewish podcast together where they're going to tell their stories of the anti-Semitism they're facing um, in their schools and beyond, and we hope to share that with everybody um, and to work in solidarity to help end this for them in their lifetime. I want to thank you all uh, for joining us as a commitment to ensuring that we halt the spread of anti-Semitism in Marin County and beyond. We stand together, united, against anti-Semitism and hatred and prejudice in this world. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce Ty Gregory, CEO of JCRC. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Rabbi, and thank you for hosting us. Good morning, everyone. I want everyone to say together, here I am. Here, here I, I am. am. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> it's critical that we understand in this time of rising hate 
that the Jewish community has been given permission to have our own conversation about our own discrimination. Someone asked me, how come we can't talk about all forms of hate today? And I said, we need to. But in the same way that other communities are given the space to talk about their own unique experiences, so too do we as the Jewish community. And we are so grateful for all of you from different walks of life, from different city councils, supervisors from the county, all the way up to Congress for being here with us. Let's give everyone behind me a huge round of applause. A few minutes into our program, I'm going to do a roll call. Um, but first, let me talk about why we're here today. Over the course of the pandemic, we saw a surge in anti-Semitism, perhaps most markedly after the Gaza-Israel escalation 10 months ago. We heard stories from parents whose kids were being bullied on TikTok and Instagram. We saw resolutions that crossed the line from anti-Israel into pure anti-Semitism. And we saw Jewish employees and students and teachers and communities and rabbis excluded from the coalition of progressive organizations and constituencies that we have here in the Bay Area. I want to talk about modern anti-Semitism. Over the past 18 months, we've convened 50 Jewish organizations at the JCRC to come up with a consensus definition and conversation around anti-Semitism. So I want to share a couple points that we came up with that we think are conversations that are not happening enough today on this topic. Number one, Jews get to define what anti-Semitism is, not someone else. No other community would allow someone else to define their own form of oppression. We should not allow that either. Number two, different Jews experience anti-Semitism differently. If you're an Orthodox Jew living in New York City, you might be nervous to go on the subway because you're being visibly Jewish with the kippot, the tzitzit, or anyone who wears them again, David. If you're a Jew of color, you experience anti-Semitism at the intersection of racism. And as a gay Jew, I experience it at the intersection of homophobia. We all experience anti-Semitism differently, and it looks different for each one of us. Next. Jewish identity is being conflated with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and we are being scapegoated regardless of our connection or position on that issue. It is no different than the way that this quote-unquote China virus has been led to Asian Pacific Islanders being scapegoated for something happening overseas. This is not a political conversation about the state of Israel. This is about Jews being scapegoated and not being allowed to live and breathe with their own voice and perspectives. Next. Anti-Semitism needs to be taken as seriously as other forms of oppression. Too often our conversation is left off the table in our schools, in our city halls. We need to make sure that this is taken seriously and that it's understood not to be something just from the 1930s and 40s, but something happening today. That's why we're all here. We are living and breathing these experiences. Fifth, anti-Semitism related to Israel is not too controversial or political to talk about. Criticism of any government around the world, including our government and the Israeli government, is fair game. That's what a democracy is all about. But anti-Semitic tropes can weaponize these critiques of the state of Israel, the Israeli people, and the Israeli government using ancient anti-Semitic tropes, like this concept of this Jewish global cabal, or globalists, if you will, blaming Israel for all of the world's woes. And we certainly see that today. Lastly. Anti-Semitism is found all across the American political spectrum and should not be used as a bludgeon by one side to win political points. It's all across the political spectrum and it should be recognized. And for those of us on the left, we have to start working on it on the left. For those of us on the right, we need to start working on it on the right. And we also recognize at the same time that this is most extreme on both polarities in our politics. And that's where we see violence, that's where we see threats. That's where we saw, for example, you know, in Pittsburgh or in Colleyville, we see on both extremes, that this can become very violent. And we also recognize that there's some concern around the flyers that have been distributed in cities like Napa and in Berkeley and across the Bay Area and the country. While there's no credible threat, we know that it makes our community feel unsafe and unwelcome in our communities which is why, again, it's so important that all of you are demonstrating your support for our community at this challenging time. So with that, I want to introduce my friend and colleague, Joyce Sisiski, who's the interim CEO of the Jewish Community Federation and Endowment Fund, to introduce our keynote speaker.
Thanks, everybody. Hello, everyone. I am honored to be here and want to thank you. Fighting anti-Semitism is some of the most important work that our Jewish Community Federation and Endowment Fund does. We stand in solidarity and coalition with our fellow, fellow Jewish organizations against anti-Semitism. We are proud to partner with JCRC. They are one of our largest and most long-standing grantees to be able to support uh, rising anti-Semitism across the Bay Area. We're proud to partner with you on the Here I Am initiative, which has engaged tens of thousands of community members in how to become Jewish allies. We advocate at the Federation for hate crime legislation and nonprofit security grant funding. Biden just signed a package last week that includes increased nonprofit security grant program grants from 180 million to 250 million. The No Hate Act signed into law in 2021 will significantly improve how law enforcement responds to hate crimes. And our annual grants to and partnership with the Jewish Public Affairs Committee of California and the Jewish Federations of North America uh, for state and federal advocacy around these issues is just core to the work that we do. Our federation also leads our community security program. We have a director of community security who helps provide vulnerability assessments, including at day schools, synagogues, JCCs, and Jewish campuses throughout the Bay Area region. With our assistance, 16 Bay Area Jewish organizations we assisted received a total of $2.5 million in state security grants for improvements, training, and hiring guards. After Coleyville, Texas, and the events that happened there, our security uh, director organized dozens of security training. Some of you may have participated on them. We had more than 350 people attend uh, uh, one or more of these events. And next week, we're starting more in-person trainings at synagogues and Jewish organizations. Uh, and also, we partner with the Anti-Defamation -Defama League to raise law enforcement awareness of hate incidents in Marin and around the Bay Area, most recently with the hateful flyers that Ty mentioned, including here in Tiburon. We also, lastly, guide our donors. We serve as a community foundation uh, uh, here in the Bay Area, and we help our donor advised fund holders think about how they can use philanthropy to also stop hate. Last year and this year alone, we've provided more than a half a million dollars to the ADL, for example, uh, and other nonprofits like Facing Hate who wanna do work around advocacy and education. In conclusion, and before I uh, welcome our guest, I just wanna say that our fight and commitment to ending hate knows no boundaries. I returned on Thursday from Poland. I was in Warsaw and at the Ukrainian border in Medica, and it's, I can only say that it's the intersection of pure evil and the best of humankind. Uh, in Warsaw, the train station is uh, welcoming thousands of refugees, including Jewish people who, you know, not 80 years ago were living in the Warsaw ghetto where they were taking trains where they went to certain death in Treblinka. So uh, our federation is really proud to do this work with JCRC and across the Bay Area and across the world. I am honored today to introduce Congressman Jared Huffman. Congressman Huffman has represented California's second congressional district since 2013, which spans from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Oregon border. He currently serves on the Committee on Natural Resources, the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, and the Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. Congressman Huffman founded the Congressional Free Thought Caucus to promote sound public policy based on reason, science, and moral values while protecting the secular character of government and championing the value of freedom and thought worldwide. During his four terms in Congress, he has built a reputation as a progressive leader dedicated to the needs of his district and focused on finding bipartisan compromises and real solutions to pressing issues. Before serving in Congress, Congressman Huffman represented the North Bay for six years in the California Assembly, and before that worked as a senior attorney for the Natural Resources Defense Council, a public interest attorney, and served 12 years in local government as director of the Marin Municipal Water District. Congressman Huffman resides in San Rafael with his wife, Susan, and two children, and we are so fortunate to call the Congressman a friend to the Jewish community whether addressing anti-Semitism, 
working with our social service agencies, standing up for our values on issues like immigration reform and gun violence prevention, or supporting a strong U.S.-Israel relationship and a two-state solution, we know that he is working hard for us in Congress, and we are so proud to have him here with us today. Thank you. Joy, thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Thanks to you and the Federation for your leadership. Uh, to our cantor and our rabbi, thanks to, to you for getting us off to a great start, setting the right tone for this event. And Ty, thanks for that brilliant and insightful um, opening set of remarks on anti-Semitism. That was as um, thoughtful and useful, I think, a framework for talking about and thinking about uh, this issue as I have heard. So uh, really appreciate that. Um, and thanks, everyone, for inviting me to be with you. Uh, it's very important that we're coming together, standing together today uh, on this subject. And it's also, just on a personal level, wonderful to be with you in person. Um, you know, the last time I was here at the Jewish Community Center with actual people, um, I remember it well because it was my birthday, February 18th, and uh, it was 2020. David, uh, we, were, we were making some music that evening. I had my guitar, and uh, what we had done is we had hosted a stakeholder roundtable on um, many of these same issues. We wanted to show solidarity against discrimination in all of its forms, and we sang some folk songs together, uh, and it was a wonderful evening. Um, a lot has happened uh, since then. Uh, obviously, uh, we have been in and out of quarantine. We have lived through the January 6th insurrection. There was a glimmer of hope after that insurrection that some of the ugliness and hatred that uh, kind of spilled over on that day uh, would recede uh, and that we'd, we would recapture decency and uh, facts and, and other values that seem to be very much under attack along with the United States Capitol. Uh, and it's, it's tragic that uh, we have backslid so much just uh, in a little over a year since those events. Um, but uh, look, uh, it is no secret that under the Trump regime, and I, and I call it a regime because it felt like a regime to me, it was an administration if you want to use a less loaded term, but um, Donald Trump was not the first person to traffic in hate and discrimination. Uh, but he certainly opened a door at the highest level that led it into the mainstream. And, and I think that's a problem we continue to deal with. I remember literally just days after his election in 2016, one of the things I always loved doing is the Veterans Parade in Petaluma. Veterans Day uh, was just a few days after that 2016 election. And that door was open and you could see it in Petaluma, of all places, because as uh, we rode down the street and you know celebrated this great community event, uh, there were a couple of kids with Confederate flags and you know really hateful messages on their shirts, standing in the most misplaced, inappropriate way at that otherwise wonderful community event. And what I did then is what I've tried to do ever since: um, call it out. Uh, posted it on social media, condemned it, spotlighted it in every way I could because the one thing Donald Trump did was give social license and normalcy to this ugliness. And I think one of the obvious things all of us have to do if we, if we oppose it uh, is to deny that social license and reject that normalization of these things. Uh, we cannot normalize these behaviors. We certainly can never again allow a leader of the United States uh, to do those things again. And let me just say how grateful I am to have President Joe Biden setting a very different tone on these matters. He embodies civility and kindness and compassion. Uh, and that is leadership by example that I'm very grateful for. Um, look, I'm in good company here today with a lot of allies who are doing the same sort of important work uh, right here at the community level, opposing all kinds of discrimination, and doing that as community leaders. And by the way, isn't it great that we have so many council members and leaders from throughout Marin County and Sonoma County here today at every level? I think that's a really strong and important statement. Uh, but doing that is one of the most powerful ways that we can push back against this uh, ancient scourge of anti-Semitism and other forms of hatred. Um, we are not immune to it here in wonderful 
Marin County. Uh, all of you know that there has been an uptick in discrimination and specifically in anti-Semitism. Anti -Semitism, and um, I know all of us want to push back on that in every way they can. Um, so I've done uh, some due diligence, I guess, on things we, we might be able to do. I've met with our wonderful district attorney. Uh, the events in Tiburon that kind of horrified all of us um, certainly caught my attention. And I wish I could tell you that there was some, you know, clear um, criminal statute or remedy that we could apply here and, and bring accountability uh, to this. Unfortunately, the people who do these things um, are not only have very dark hearts, um, they're not stupid when it comes to navigating our criminal laws. They walk right up to the edge of criminality and do some things to protect themselves against that kind of accountability. But I, I'm not willing to just leave it at that. Uh, I think there are things we can do to uh, deny them the social license that they seek uh, on that ugliness and, and maybe even bring some uh, real tangible accountability to these folks. There may be some civil legal theories that can be applied to bring some powerful accountability to them. And I'm, I'm working on that and, and looking into that uh, in every way I can. So with that, uh, let me thank you again, everyone, for being part of this really important coming together today. Thanks for including me, and I look forward to uh, hearing from your other speakers. Congressman, thank you so much for being with all of us on behalf of the entire Jewish community. It means so much to have your allyship and support on these critical issues. Let's give them a round. I don't know about all of you, but I'm schwitzing a little bit up here, haven't you? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the word of the day. Schwitz, the schwitz. Sweating. So, so what we're going to do is the roll call, and then I'm going to invite all of my friends up here, except for our next speaker, to find some shade because they need to look their best the rest of the day, right? Okay. As do I, but I'll take one for the team. Okay. So here we go. Please hold your applause. From the United States House of Representatives, Congressman Jared Huffman. From the California State Legislature, Assemblymember Mark Levine. From the County of Marin, Supervisor Damon Connolly. District Attorney Lori Fregoli, Supervisor Katie Rice, Assistant DA Otis Bruce Jr., Deputy Superintendent Ken Lippy of Marin County Department of Education, and a big shout out to the Board of Supervisors for passing an anti-Semitism resolution. Let's give them a round. Here we go. Thank you. Um, and uh, just a heads up to everyone else up here, Jewish Heritage Month is in May and we invite you to work with us to bring that to your city councils and counties across the Bay Area. Um, from the city of San Rafael, Mayor Kate Collin, Council Member Eli Hill, Council Member Rachel Kurtz, City Attorney Rob Epstein, Captain Roy Leon of the San Rafael PD, and Lieutenant Todd Berenger of the San Rafael PD. From Novato, Mayor Eric Lucan, Council Member Mark Milberg. From the Larkspur, Council Member Kevin Haroff. From Sausalito, Vice Mayor Melissa Blaustein. From San Anselmo, Mayor Alexis Feynman and Council Member Brian Colbert. From City of Corte Madero, Council Member Eli Beckman. From Tiburon, Mayor John Wellner, Council Member Jack Ryan, Council Member Holly Thier, Council Member Noah Griffin. I'm not done yet. <laughs> From Fairfax, Mayor Stephanie Hellman, Vice Mayor Chance Cutrano, and Council Member Renee Goddard. From Ross, Council Member Julie McMillan. From Healdsburg, Vice Mayor Ariel Kelly. From the Southern Marin Fire District, Director Catherine Hillard. From the California Coastal Commission, Commissioner Sarah Amenzade. From Canal Alliance, Aaron Burnett. From the Asian American Alliance of Marin, Sue Lee. From the Interfaith Sustainable Food Collaborative, Steve Schwartz. From the Marin Interfaith Council, Mark Noguchi. And I'd also like to thank our partners today, Congregation Rodef Shalom, the OSHA Marin JCC, Brandeis Marin, Noah Marin, Congregation Kol Shofar, the Jewish Community Federation, and Jemena Jews Indigenous to the Middle East and North Africa, and the Marin County Democratic Club, Jewish Democratic Club. Thank you all for being here. I'd also be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our Marin JCRC board members, Jennifer Wolf, our chair, Sandy Bragar, Michael Pappas, and Peter Yolas, and to my incredible staff who put this on, thank you so much. Jessica Trubowicz, where's Jessica? 
Jessica made this happen. So to all my friends up here, get some shade, and I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Sorry, you're stuck with me. I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you. I thought Paul was going to introduce him, but I guess that's... Yes, yes. Oh, he's still down. Now you have a bigger audience. Well, sometimes you just feel very alone when you stand up for what you believe in. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Paul Steinberg from Congregation Kol Shofar to the podium. Is Rabbi here? Yeah, I think he was excited for that shade. Just, uh, it's a practice round in the shade. Getting as much shade as I can. Hello, everybody. It's my honor to introduce my friend and assembly member, Mark Levine. Mark Levine was first elected in 2012 to represent California's 10th assembly district. In his near decade of service, Assemblymember Levine has successfully authored over 80 laws leading state and national efforts to prevent gun violence, increase access to mental health services, and promote responsible and compassionate immigration policies. Assemblymember Levine is currently chair of the Assembly Select Committee on Food Systems and serves on the Agriculture, Appropriations, Higher Education, Revenue and Taxation, Rules and Water, Parks and Wildlife Committees. Many of us know the assembly member best for his tenure as chair of the state legislative Jewish caucus, where he led efforts to stand up against anti-Semitism and other forms of hate and bigotry, fought against attempts to boycott Israel, advocated for funding for many Jewish community service agencies and other budget priorities, and led a delegation of state legislators to Israel. We're fortunate to have Mark represent Marin in Sacramento. We know we can count on his leadership. Uh, thank you so much, Rabbi Steinberg. Um, uh, I'm so honored to join all of you here today. Uh, this is a very important day for us, and it was, it, it was heartwarming for me to see so many elected officials stand with us uh, when we're standing together against anti-Semitism. And it, it brings me back, uh, as I was coming here, to a moment um, after the Tubbs fire. Uh, I was invited to go up to Camp Newman, which had all but completely burned down. And uh, I was invited to go and tour it. We were fortunate to be able to bring $10 million in funds to help rebuild the camp. But I was brought up to where the Star of David is up on the hill. And, uh, and the camp director, many of you know Ruben Narkilovich and, and Tracy Klepo, who, who uh, many of you here at the Rodef Shalom community know, uh, was with me. And Ruben told me about this tradition where the campers, they climb up the hill, which we did. We, we did a little bit differently because of all of the, the ash and, and uh, the, the burn scars on the hill. Um, but they come up to that point, and from the top of their lungs, they proclaim, I love being Jewish. And I do. And I surprise them both. They weren't paying attention, but I got in that spot, and I yelled at the top of my lungs, I love being Jewish. And, and Ruben said, you really should have told me you were going to do that so I could capture that on video, Mark. <laughs> but I think that we've got some video cameras that are here. And I think it's important, um, you know, it's not just that you say it there on the hill. You say it that it, it's, it's how you live your life. Now, you don't need to be Jewish to be affirmatively pro-Jewish and to be supportive of, of the Jewish community, uh, just like any community uh, that we have that uh, deserves all of them deserve representation, to be able to live in their community free of terror and intimidation, to be who they are, whatever their identity is, that you can stand up for them. Just like we had all of these elected officials stand up here with us to say, it is okay to be Jewish and no one should intimidate you in your own community. And, uh, and so I, I, a lot of gratitude for that. Now, many of you know I'm not running for re-election to the state assembly, I'm running for insurance commissioner, but I am proud of the work that I have done, not just in being a Jewish lawmaker, but being affirmative in the work that I have done on behalf of the Jewish community statewide. And that means, and we, we heard about some of the federal grants, $250 million for nonprofit security grants, but in California, we, in, in addition to that, layered on another 50 million last year, and we're going to try to do that again this year. And after talking to Tracy today about how new construction doesn't qualify, I'm co-authoring a bill to change that. Um, 
So, and because of amazing grassroots leadership from people like Mark Solomons and Noah Marin that we are authoring legislation to make sure that a swastika, a, a noose, um, a burning cross, they are all treated equally under hate speech. And I, I don't need to wait, you know, as a Jew, we don't need to wait for other people to do that. I co-founded the Jewish Caucus so that we can do it ourselves and then bring community, bring other members, bring other ethnic caucuses in the legislature together to help support things that we as Jews care so much about. And it's, it's, uh, it's really important, of course, just to be here and, and as I said, to, to model how I feel publicly, but, but to do it personally. And, and so I'm really grateful. Um, you know, we had Rabbi uh, Steinberg who introduced me and, and Kol Shofar did such a wonderful, beautiful job for my son's bar mitzvah. But as a true Jewish family, my children can't agree on a synagogue. So my daughter's bat mitzvah will be the very last bat mitzvah in this building um, in June. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, I, I find that really humorous and expensive. But um, <laughs> the... <laughs> Ty mentioned something very important, though, and, and it's, not, it's not even a, it's not, I like to joke, but it's not a laughing matter. He talked about the insidious nature by which anti-Semitism enters the public realm, and far too often it engages something which almost every Jewish American feels tied to, and it is the Jewish homeland, the one place in the world where it is safe to be Jewish. It, it engages Israel, and so as an elected official, of course, on social media, I've been called names. But I wanna tell you something that was a very big surprise to me um, that I encountered as an elected official. And this was when a, a so-called progressive organization called Courage Campaign, they actually in endorsed me in my last election. I have a 100% score rating with them. But in their endorsement of me, they said, despite Mark Levine's support of settlements and the occupation, he also has a progressive record and will, will endorse this person. And I was extraordinarily offended. I, I didn't want that type of endorsement. It is anti-Semitism to ascribe the actions of a foreign government to someone because of their identity, because I'm, I'm Jewish. And, and I will not let what they said take away my love for Israel and the importance of a strong relationship between my country the United States and Israel. They will not put daylight between the two of, of those for me. So we called them out on it. And they were very offended that I would call them out on it. But this is gonna hurt our fundraising, Mark. That's too bad for you. It, it has to be called out. But this is happening to Jews everywhere, particularly our young Jews in high schools and colleges, that to undermine one's Jewish identity and a very strong sense of that identity with Israel is wrong and we should stand against that. And of course it is uh, in however you want to define anti-Semitism, I like IHRA's description, it is anti-Semitism when you do that. And, um, and so I want to say thank you to this community for standing with us. Uh, thank you to JCRC and all of the local partners. Um, it means the world to me to be a part of this community today. Thank you. Thank you, Assembly Member. And uh, we had something similar happen with the Sierra Club a couple weeks ago. And I know how important environmental issues are to this community. I want to thank everybody who worked with us to have dialogue with the Sierra Club, who reinstated their trips to Israel after conversations with our community. Next, I'd like to invite up John Wellner, President of the Board of the Ocean Marin JCC and Mayor of Tiburon to introduce our next speaker. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. What an amazing event. I want to thank JCRC for organizing this. And thank you, Congressman Huffman and Assemblymember Levine for your great remarks. Uh, I'm fortunate to be here with two hats. One is president of the JCC. And in that capacity, welcome you all here. And I'm just delighted to see you here on our campus. Uh, and secondly, as mayor of Tiburon, and as was mentioned earlier, Tiburon happened to be the location where those terrible flyers were distributed 
Um, but it was a regional issue, and it could have happened to any of us. So we're so grateful. We're so grateful that you're all here uh, and that we're all standing together against this type of thing. So I'm here to introduce Ria Saw, who is the president and CEO of the Marin Community Foundation, which is, a, as you all know, a tremendous organization here in Marin. Um, she's the president and CEO and has more than 25 years of philanthropic, environmental, and public policy experience. Prior to joining the Marin Community Foundation in 2021, Ria served as the third president of the Natural Resources Defense Council and served in the Obama administration as the Assistant Secretary for Policy, Management, and Budget at the U.S. Department of the Interior. There, she led several cross-cutting initiatives at the department, including establishing a successful diversity program, leading the interagency wildland fire national coordinating body, and creating the first ever national strategy for federal land acquisition. Prior to her appointment at Interior, Rhea worked at both the David and Lucille Packard Foundation and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. Now at the Marin Community Foundation, Rhea is leading an organization whose mission is to encourage and apply philanthropic contributions to help improve the human condition, embrace diversity, promote a humane and democratic society, and enhance the community's quality of life now and for future generations. Welcome you to the to the event and look forward to what you have to say, Ria. Good to see you. I really appreciate that. Hey, Ty. Um, wow. Uh, I'm so very honored to be here today amongst all of the incredible distinguished guests that we have amongst us. Um, it is an uh, amazing day. Uh, I'm really glad we're in the shade, but just a beautiful day. Uh, and. Um, as someone who moved recently from Brooklyn, New York, I'm still in a little bit of a shock about just how crazy beautiful everything is all the time. Um, but uh, I guess despite the, just the setting, right, just the, the, the atmosphere, the community, the people, the spirit that um, exists today in this space, um, I think we all recognize um, that it kind of belies the trouble um, in this world, um, the t tumultuous um, and treacherous times that we've all been living in in the last uh, several years. Um, times that, uh, as many other speakers have noted, uh, include rising hate of all kind, um, white supremacy, authoritarianism, racism, misogyny, you name it, we've seen it. Um, so while it may seem in some ways, uh, to Congressman Huffman's point, that we can ascribe uh, some of these uh, uh, explosions of hate to individuals like Trump and Putin. Um, I think we all know that the realities of these seeds of hate have been in our grounds for some time now. Um, they've just needed a little sunlight or water or whatnot to germinate. Um, so we know this to be true, even in a county uh, like Marin or a community like San Rafael. Um, but we also do know that what is true is that there are more seeds that are dormant and germinating that are the seeds of hope and of love. These seeds, however, cannot propagate without direct and immediate and ongoing attention. They cannot propagate unless we come together as a community and work together as a community to create the conditions for them to flourish. And then they cannot dominate the landscape unless everyone stands up for what we know is right and stands against what we know is wrong. So um, as uh, the introduction uh, outlined, I uh, come to Marin from a very long um, career in uh, national and international policy and politics, um, and that in and of itself is the reason why I left. <laughs> it's very difficult to be working on those issues, so thank you, bless you, Congressman Huffman. Um, uh, but I, I not only wanted to escape, I actually wanted to invest my time and resources and heart and soul into community because the reality is this is where it starts and this is where it ends for anything that we see in the world. 
So the opportunity to make a difference right now, as we leave this stage, as we move into our days, is right before us. We can all make that difference. And with respect to this rising scourge of hate, we will win. We have always won, and we will continue to win, but it takes each and every one of us every single day to make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much, and we deeply appreciate the work that you and the Marin Foundation are doing to bring communities together, to integrate minority communities like ours and our neighbors into this amazing county. Next, I'd like to bring up Mark Solomons, founder of Noah Marin to the podium, and uh, he and Noah are doing a great job advancing AB 2282, which I hope he'll speak for a moment about. Come on up, Mark. So thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, this was a little out of order, so but here we go. I'm here to, uh, it's my honor to introduce Laurie Frugoli, the Marin County District Attorney. Her dedication to keeping Marin safe started in high school. She attended College of Marin and uh, later law school while volunteering and working in law enforcement. Throughout her career, Laurie has been a pioneer, breaking the glass ceiling in law enforcement as one of the first women to volunteer as a reserve police officer in San Rafael and as a police officer for the Santa Rosa Police Department. <clears throat> Since 1990, Laurie has represented the county of Marin first as a deputy district attorney and later as district attorney on thousands of cases in over 100 jury trials. She has sought justice for victims of domestic violence, gang crimes, sexual assault, home invasions, and elder abuse. Laurie has earned many prestigious awards as well as a reputation in the community for treating all people with respect and professionalism. I thank the DA for being receptive to Noah Marin's initiatives. And Laurie and her staff have always taken acts of hatred against any group seriously. Laurie uh, sought to find a dedicated position for a hate crime investigator, and she continues to be a partner to the Jewish community in fighting anti-Semitism. Thank you, Laurie. Okay, so just to uh, explain that our group, Noah Marin, Name, Oppose, and Abolish Hate, in Marin, uh, founded after the swastika incident when the DA was not able to press charges. And so one of our members, who I believe is here, Mark Levine, uh, different Mark Levine, uh, <laughs> took the penal code and came up with language to uh, make it, uh, to equalize and strengthen the penalties for any terrorizing symbol a noose, a, a uh, burning cross, and a swastika. So this proposal, the proposed amendment, is uh, being heard at the Public Safety Committee uh, next Tuesday at 9 a.m., and we're very hopeful that it will leave that committee and then be approved by the legislature. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mark. Um, I'm going to go a little bit off script because I want to follow up on the importance of what Mark said, and one of my primary uh, observations and wishes for everyone here is that you should be honored for being here to support your community and everyone in your church and everyone who suffers anti-Semitism, racism, hatred, bigotry of any person who either by their culture or their choice of how they're going to live their life or suffer these hate crimes and hate incidents. And um, I don't know how many of you might have been at that forum that we had about the swastika incident. There were 400 attendees. Um, I see a lot of you shaking your heads. And I just want to say that was a, a moment in time. It wasn't a great moment in time for me personally because it was clear that we, my office needed to do more to serve the community all people who suffer any kind of hate crime or a bias incident. And that incident, as Mark pointed out, really drew, made it clear the difference between hateful conduct and hate crimes. And we can't prosecute cases unless there's an underlying crime 
and then if we sh have shown it was done for a hateful purpose, then we can prosecute. And um, that's something that we're continuing to educate the community about. It's on our website, it's on the Attorney General's website, but that moment in time at that forum when we walked away and said, okay, we need to do more. This is not gonna be a performative act on our part. Um, that, I believe, is where NOAA was formed, and that group contacted me and said, hey, you said you were gonna meet with me, let's do it. And I said, fine, but I wanna have a positive conversation, I wanna find a way to move forward together, and so uh, one of our justice partners um, who's here today, Rochelle, is here and she's a restorative justice practitioner and she does work in our office in the county. She met with Noah first and then with me and one of the first things that came out was we need to take this on a county level. We need to have a county response to this, not just little towns. And so Mark was the one that said, what about a countywide thing? Would you help us with that? And I said, yes, we will partner with you. And so from that came meetings with Mark, Assembly Member Mark Levine and other people and the other Mark Levine who wrote that legislation, thank you. And look where it is now. It's going to be heard next week. That's pretty amazing. And so don't ever think that the power of showing up doesn't make a difference, that the power of speaking up and working together doesn't make a difference because it does. So I really want to thank everyone for being here today and standing up for everyone. I've been asked to say a few things about the flyers that were distributed. Um, Congressman Huffman is correct. We cannot prosecute those cases, but it doesn't mean we don't want you to, to report them. It doesn't mean we're not gonna look at them and see if on some level at some point they might become a crime. And on a countywide level, what we're doing, um, again, with NOAA, we're starting a countywide hate bias collaborative. And that's gonna be county-driven, community-driven, uh, Otis Bruce, the assistant district attorney from my office, who, Otis, could you stand up for one second? He is um, going to be leading that, so he will be reaching out to all the different cities and different towns that have their own individual uh, DEI and equity committees, and we were going to be asking people to sit at the table all in a room with us and address this on a countywide level. So each person, for example, from each city might be in charge of tracking their next door uh, publications that are out there and keeping track of things that, that might not be crimes but are certainly hateful and that are harming our community and educating our community and having public outreach and social media presentations. So that's something that I'm proud of that we're gonna be doing moving forward. I do wanna say I'm proud of the Police Chiefs Association uh, despite the fact that some of those flyers were not put at homes in their towns, and the way they were distributed was they were tossed out of cars into people's driveways. And um, the police chiefs stepped up with my office and made a countywide statement that we're not gonna stand for this and we're gonna fully investigate them. And we left a copy of that for you up front if you'd like to see it. Um, we'd be happy for you to look at that. And my colleague Patrice O'Neill from Not In Our Town, uh, which is one of our partners, She's a national nonprofit who does a lot of work in this area. She creates documentaries. I know she's had many events here. We absolutely support her in everything she does. Now I'm looking for her quote. I can't say it any better than Patrice O'Neill did, so I'm just gonna read to you her quote because it really fits uh, this moment. And her quote to us that is on our police chief statement is, let's make no mistake, these flyers are meant to frighten and harm the Jewish community and spread a message of hate and lies to everyone who sees them. As we seek to respond, let's be careful about what we amplify. We are stronger than hate, and our communities need to educate themselves on the spread of anti-Semitism and hate speech that continue to circulate. And I want you to know we do look at these cases very carefully. We have a team of experienced prosecutors, a diverse team of prosecutors, and it is gut-wrenching when we have to make a decision that we know disappoints our community because these organized people know exactly how to skirt the law. But that doesn't mean we're going to ignore it, and that doesn't mean we're not gonna work with our community to stop this on every level that we can. So I wanna thank everyone for being here today and for giving us the opportunity. Come see Otis or myself after if you're interested in our collaborative. And thank you so much for being here.
Thank you so, so much to our DEA for taking our community's concerns seriously around these issues. We so appreciate your leadership. I want to take a moment to recognize a group of Jewish local elected officials. JCRC has been building up uh, a network that we call Banjo, Bay Area Network of Jewish Officials, and we've started a conversation to bring Jewish electeds together to work together on issues like this. Can I ask all of them to stand, please? Thank you for your partnership and for your leadership standing up as Jewish elected officials. And another shout out to Assemblymember Levine because we have a robust California Jewish Legislative Caucus that does great work in Sacramento. Next, I'd like to invite up my friend, Sarah Levin, who's the Executive Director of Jews Indigenous of the Middle East and North Africa, Jimena, to introduce our next speaker. Assemblymember Levine, I'm not sure where you are. We share a name and we also sh share a love for the IRA definition of anti-Semitism. So thank you, Ty, for having me here. It's my honor to be here representing Mizrahi, Sephardic, and Middle Eastern Jewish communities, not only in Marin, but across the state of California. Together, we are unified in our fight against anti-Semitism and all its manifestations, including the signaling out of Israel and our Jewish students in public schools. As a resident of San Rafael for the last 10 years, it's my pleasure to introduce San Rafael Mayor Kate Collin. She is the first female to hold office of mayor since the city was incorporated in 1847. Mayor Collin joined the San Rafael City Council in January 2013 and was a planning commissioner for nearly eight years before that. She has lived in the Sun Valley neighborhood since 1996 with her husband, Jeff, where they raised their two children. Mayor Kate's goals for the city include focusing on four key policy areas, recovering from the economic impact of COVID-19, homelessness, environmental sustainability, and racial justice. She strongly believes in working with the San Rafael community to find solutions that reflect our communal values, as well as partnerships with local residents businesses and neighborhoods to make San Rafael the best it can be. And we do live in the best city in Marin. Yeah. <laughs> it is an honor to be before you today. I'd like all the elected officials just to stand up where you are so you can recognize them. And I invite the people with whom I serve, Eli Hill, Rachel, Rachel Kurtz, Rob Epstein and Supervisor Connolly, if he's here, to come stand with me up here. I want you to see your local elected officials. And we're doing this because local, and Rhea said this, this is the front line for this conversation. Thank you. They didn't know that they were going to be asked to come up here. <laughs> but like many people, I haven't gotten out much in the last couple of years. So it's wonderful to be here. And to be here in my spiritual home of Rodef Shalom. Rodef, yeah, thank you for hosting us. Rodef is where both of my now grown children, don't know how that happened, happened overnight, but it's where they were B'nai Mitzvah. In addition to being a mom and a parent, like these folks up here, I serve our community as mayor of San Rafael. And it's in these overlapping spaces of personal and public life where I see and I discuss and I experience discrimination and the othering that takes so many forms. Make no mistake about it, anti-Semitism is one of those forms. Over the dinner table and now over Zoom, my husband, my kids and I discuss and reflect upon the anti-Semitism we see in our city, in our county, in our world. And we ask ourselves, how should we respond? How do we respond as individuals? So let me share one of the Colin family responses, and it's to lean really strongly into our values. Values, we all have different values. The ones I'm gonna name, understanding, compassion, courage, community. So today, let's commit to supporting each other, supporting San Rafael elected, supporting the elected who stood up, the people that were up here, and each of us in those responses as we lean in, we lean in, around the dinner table, maybe with your immediate family, maybe with extended family, or up on the dais, 
or reading that latest online post. We are gonna lean in together so we can have those hard conversations and we're gonna speak up when we see hate and we're gonna do it together. We do this not only for the people that are here right now or the people that are watching us virtually, but also for the folks who aren't here, those who are not yet part of the conversation and who can be our allies and will be our allies and they will stand in us, stand with us in solidarity to address anti-Semitism. I say Hanani and I hope you join me in saying, here I am. Thank you all for letting us speak today. Thank you guys for coming up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's join, let's say here I am one more time. Here I am. And then just uh, the part that you don't say out loud, I wanna speak to our, our community members for a minute. I know that we're in the sun. I know that this is a lengthy program. It's so important we get our elected officials to speak on the record about these important issues. We have two more important speakers. Thank you so much again to everyone for showing up and to our friends on Zoom or, or on Facebook Live. Thank you again for tuning in. I also miss Council Member Pat Eklund from Novato. Thank you so much for being here. Next, I'd like to bring up Dr. Peg Sandell, the head of school for Brandeis Marin, who's gonna introduce our next speaker. Come on up. Thank you, JCRC, for putting on this event, and thank you all for being here. Um, good afternoon, and I welcome you to really the doorstep of our school where our students, kindergarten through eighth grade, are doing what they need to do to learn and equip themselves to stand up, to be upstanders and not bystanders, to speak out when they see hate, when they see anti-Semitism, and to develop and deepen their pride in their Jewish identity. So thank you for taking this stand today where we can hear them doing their thing, and I promise you, they hear you doing yours. It gives me great pleasure and a lot of pride to introduce Ken Lippi. Ken is my hero, uh, along with so many others at the Marin County Office of Education, who have literally brought together independent, public, private, and parochial schools for the last two years to help us in our COVID response, but Ken's role in helping us in emergency response extends years and decades beyond that, and I know will extend into the future. Ken is the Deputy Superintendent of the Marin County Office of Education. Since joining MCOE in 2000, Ken has directed a number of programs, including the Marin County School to Career Partnership, the Walker Creek Ranch Outdoor Education School, Marin's Community School and Alternative Education Services, and Safe Schools and Prevention Programs. As Deputy Superintendent, Ken works in direct support to Superintendent Mary Jane Burke, another hero. Long active in civic affairs, Ken is a former member of the Marin County Planning Commission, and he served for 10 years on the Fairfax Town Council, including two terms as mayor. Please welcome Ken Lippy. Thank you very much, Peg, and back at you for the leadership and commitment and complete devotion you've shown over the last two years to keeping your families, your students safe. You've been at countless meetings every step of the way with us, and we're very grateful for the leadership that you've shown. Good morning, and it's my honor to be here with you today. Um, let me start with a quote from renowned author and humanist, Elie Wiesel. He said this about the education of children, and these are words that seem so timely considering where we are in the world today. He said this, young people want to learn. They are thirsty for knowledge. They want to remember. The main thing is to teach them where not to go. Oppression, not to go. Dictatorship, not to go. Racism and prejudice, absolutely not to go. This is a moral plan for our society. Our schools join in with this moral plan. We feel its weight and we feel its opportunities. We embrace it and its call to action as we work to address and confront acts of anti-Semitism in our schools and in our community. And 
we pledge to work to create a safe, supportive environment for all of our students, families, and staff. But words are one thing, actions are another. I'm pleased to report to you that important and meaningful work is underway in our schools. We've worked closely with local Jewish, religious, and community leaders to provide forms for our school communities and to call out anti acts of anti-Semitism when they occur, and most importantly, to respond quickly and effectively and strongly when we see them. We're working with experts in anti-Semitism education on outreach and education and bringing experts into our classrooms. And I'm proud to tell you that recently your Marin County Office of Education was chosen from among the 58 county offices of education to oversee a $2 million grant from the state of California to develop anti-Semitism curriculum and training for school staff in the area of anti-Semitism, genocide, and Holocaust education. After a very, very rigorous and very competitive review of applications, we're proud that we're going to be collaborating with Jewish families and children's services on this important work that we believe will affect schools and communities locally, statewide, and if we really do our work well, nationally. So I'm going to end the way I started this morning with another quote from Elie Wiesel. This one a little more upbeat. Emphasis must be put on learning. There's no substitute to education. It can be briefly formulated in a few words. Always, whatever you do in life, think higher, feel deeper. We're committed to addressing and preventing anti-Semitism in our schools and our community. There are times we'll succeed. There are times we will fall short. But thankfully, we have strong and committed partners, like the leaders of Congregation Rodolf Shalom and Congregation Kol Shofar, like the Anti-Defamation League, like Jewish Families and Children's Services, all who partner with us in the work we do with our students, and others who are committed to working with our students in our schools. So our pledge to our community is this. We will do all we can to help our students think higher and feel deeper. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And um, we appreciate your partnership with anti-Semitism education, Holocaust education, and in making sure that ethnic studies is inclusive and supportive of the Jewish community as it is for communities of color as we bring this into our high schools. Last but not at all least, on that note, I'd like to welcome Sophia Weinstein, a high school student at Terra Linda, to come share her experiences. Come on up. Hello, my name is Sophia Weinstein, and I'm a current senior at Terra Linda High School. I would like for you all to please imagine the scene. Feel free to close your eyes. A piercing alarm filled the hallways and red lights flashed everywhere. A stampeded teachers and students quickly escaped my middle school and everyone was confused as to what was going on. I was standing with my teachers and classmates outside in the cold rain and brisk wind when police cars sped up into the parking lot to assess the situation. I was scared and confused and asked myself, is my school under attack? After a while now, soaking wet, we were told to go into the school across the street. I later learned that my school at the time, Brandeis Marin, received a bomb threat, and other Jewish schools across the country had received similar threats over the past few days. This was a turning point in my life, where I realized that my religion and community were under attack. I was always proud to be Jewish, celebrating holidays, cooking Jewish dishes with my grandmother, learning how to read Hebrew, and having my bat mitzvah here wrote of Shalom. I always thought that anti-Semitism was left behind in World War II, but I was quite obviously wrong. My grandmother escaped from Berlin to Shanghai, China with her family when she was seven years old. 
I remember her telling me childhood stories about living through fear, humiliation, physical threats, and when her grandparents were taken away to a concentration camp. My grandmother always said that she wished more Germans would have spoken up against the Nazis instead of just hoping things would change. During my junior year at Terralinda High School, several Jewish students in my, in my county received anti-Semitic threats on social media. After personally experiencing anti-Semitism and witnessing my classmates being targeted, I felt that it was time to speak up. In light of these events, as a student board representative sitting on the Center Falls City Schools Board of Education, I helped organize an interview with a Holocaust survivor that was broadcasted to all schools in my district. One of the questions that I asked her was, today students in Marin County experience anti-Semitism on social media. Not only, not only that, but our country is surrounded by anti-Semitism. Are the anti-Semitic acts that we see today vastly different to those seen in World War II? She had an immediate response. One of the largest mistakes I see today is people thinking that anti-Semitism was left behind. In my opinion, it has started to become worse. One thing I have learned about the Jewish people is that we are a community and group of survivors. We are survivors of countless acts of anti-Semitism from hundreds and even thousands of years. My Jewish classmates and I have been fighting to have a voice heard, to make a safer and more welcoming environment for Jewish students in my school, but to also address how we can combat anti-Semitism. Our Jewish community will continue to survive like we always have, but we need support. In order to address the anti-Semitism, it can't only be an effort by the Jewish community, but by all. Anti-Semitism and bigotry have no place in an inclusive and multicultural society, and we, the students, leaders, administrators, parents here today, need to become or continue to be an active voice fighting against anti-Semitism in Marin County and beyond. Thank you. Sophia, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing your story. And on that note, this conversation doesn't end here. This is about storytelling. The Here I Am campaign is a series of press conferences. We did one in San Francisco, Oakland. We're here. We're going to do one in San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, Marin, Contra Costa, and um, Sonoma and Napa counties. But the reality is we need all of you involved with it. So I want to ask everyone to go to hereiamstories.org. You can also use the QR reader here. We're encouraging everyone to tell their stories on social media. We know that a lot of the hate originates on our social media platforms. We need to rein that in, but that could take some time. So we're reining in by putting out positive messages and storytelling about our experiences with anti-Semitism and our allies' experiences partnering with us against hate. We've received many, many videos so far from Jewish and civic leaders and community members, and I want to call on everyone to share your story just like Sophia did. We need to put these into the public arena because we know how frustrated our community is that this conversation so often stays inside of our community walls. So let's take this out into the world, and my challenge is partner with us. Go to hereiamstories.org. Let's continue the conversation. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you for being there with JCRC and the community. And together we will defeat the scourge of anti-Semitism and hate in our time. Thank you all for being here.